China just released a new artificial intelligence, and it just had a huge effect on the U.S. stock market and even crypto. The release of DeepSeek AI from a Chinese company should be a wake-up call for our industries that we need to be laser-focused on competing to win. China's latest AI breakthrough has leapfrogged the world. I think we should take the development out of China very, very seriously. A game-changing move that does not come from OpenAI, Google, or Meta. There is a new model that has all of the valley buzzing. But from a Chinese lab called DeepSeek. It's opened a lot of eyes of like what is actually happening in AI in China. What took Google and OpenAI years and hundreds of millions of dollars to build, DeepSeek says took it just two months and less than six million dollars. Now, this is not just another tech gadget or a new meme coin. It's something so much more powerful. Mark Andressen, who's one of the most respected names in venture capital, said it's one of the most amazing things he's ever seen, and it's now available for everyone to use. So, what is it, and what can it do? A newly unveiled, free, open-source AI model that beat some of the most powerful ones on the market. But it wasn't a new launch from OpenAI or model announcement from Anthropic. This one was built in the East by a Chinese research lab called DeepSeek. And it turns out its capabilities are pretty mind-blowing. Imagine an AI that can build entire video games from scratch. Even if it has to use a programming language it wasn't originally trained on, it can do that. Imagine an AI that can extract just the reasoning from complex data sets to solve problems with super sharp precision. It can do that. Imagine an AI that thinks in real time, adapting to new information as it comes in while telling you its logic. It can do that. An AI that can also scrape data from YouTube channels to analyze trends and potentially predict what's going to go viral next. And it can do that too. That's DeepSeek AI. But that's not even the crazy part. The crazy part is that U.S. tech companies like OpenAI spend over $5 billion a year and many more billions of dollars to develop this technology. And this model from China cost $5.6 million to create. Not billions, a few million. And DeepSeek R1, which is one of its open source language learning models, is 10 times cheaper than OpenAI while having an almost identical performance and, in some cases, better than GPT-4. It beat Meta's Llama, OpenAI's GPT-40, and Anthropic's Claude Sonnet 3.5 on accuracy on wide-ranging tests, a subset of 500 math problems, an AI math evaluation, coding competitions, and a test of spotting and fixing bugs in code. And they gave it away for free. Unlike OpenAI, which is ironically closed source, and the code is private, DeepSeek is completely open source, and the code is available to the public. This means China was able to recreate and catch up with our AI technology on a very limited budget with very limited access to the hardware that would make this possible. And because of this economic limitation, they figured out workarounds and pretty much ended OpenAI's dominance. Today, we released uh, Humanity's Last Exam, which is a new evaluation or benchmark of AI models that we produced by getting you know, math, physics, biology, chemistry professors to uh, provide the hardest questions they could possibly imagine. DeepSeek, which is the leading Chinese AI lab, their model uh, is actually the top performing or roughly on par with the best American models. And that leaves me with a couple of interesting questions. How does this affect the United States if the U.S. was thought to be years ahead in this field? How will this affect the stock market, specifically tech stocks? Because they've gone up specifically because of this story of U.S. superiority that's no longer true? And where did this AI really come from? And how does it actually work? And how can it make me rich? So, with that said, let's start from the beginning. Where did this technology come from? Despite its breakthrough, very, very little is known about its lab and its founder, Liang Wenfeng. According to Chinese media reports, DeepSeek was born out of a Chinese hedge fund called High Flyer Quant that manages about $8 billion in assets. But unlike OpenAI or Anthropic, which have super detailed charters and principles, DeepSeek operates with a level of secrecy because we don't know much about its founder or how they were able to put together the team or the hardware to build this technology because of the sanctions placed on China by the US. But what we do know is that they did it in just two months and at a fraction of the cost that US companies spent. How 
did they actually assemble this talent? How did they assemble all the hardware? How did they assemble the data to do all this? We don't know. And it's never been publicized and hopefully we can learn that. So the next question is, how is it any different than OpenAI and why is it better? One of DeepSeek's most impressive features is called chain of thought reasoning. This means the model doesn't just spit out answers at you, it shows you its thinking process. For example, if you ask it to solve a math problem, it will first break down the problem into smaller steps, explain why it's doing what it's doing, and then it'll give you the final answer. And this makes it not only more transparent, but also more reliable for things that need detailed planning and logical thinking. And why this matters is because chain of thought models like DeepSeek R1 are much better at handling complex multi-step problems than traditional language learning models. So, whether you're solving a tricky math equation or debugging code or planning a project, DeepSeek's ability to reason while showing you its reasons step-by-step step gives it a huge advantage over OpenAI's GPT-4. So, the next question is, what's their secret, and how were they able to do this? The secret is efficiency. Even though the US placed semiconductor restrictions that cut off China from accessing NVIDIA's most powerful chips, DeepSeek found a way to create this technology with a lot fewer resources than the US. They used NVIDIA's H800 GPUs, which are less powerful than the H100s, but they optimized their training process to squeeze every ounce of power out of them. China has caught up in the last six months in a way that is remarkable. The fact of the matter is that a couple of the Chinese uh, programs, uh, one, for example, is called DeepSeek, looks like they've caught up. They also use super clever techniques like mixture of experts architecture and 8-bit float point training, which lowered their computational costs while maintaining stability. And the result is a model that's not only cheaper, but also faster and more accurate in a lot of benchmarks. They can take a, uh, a really good big model and use a process called distillation. And what distillation is, is basically you use a very large model to help your small model get smart at the thing that you want it to get smart at. Now, it's not better in every test they did, but it's better in a lot of them. And now, the big philosophical question is, which one is better, open source or closed source? I don't trust OpenAI. I don't trust Sam Altman, and I, and I, and I don't think we want to have the most powerful AI in the world controlled by someone who is not trustworthy. Now, the United States and its companies decided to go closed source. In other words, the technology and its code are not available to the public, which is a big criticism that Elon Musk had against OpenAI. DeepSeek in China decided to go the other way, the open source way, meaning the code is public for everyone to copy and use without paying a huge amount of money. And the cost difference is really big. For example, OpenAI charges $440 per million tokens. DeepSeek's API costs just 10 cents per million tokens. And by the way, think of tokens as the building blocks of language. Every word and punctuation mark counts as a token. So, if I asked an AI bot, how are you? That would be four tokens. How are you? Plus the question mark. Now, why this matters is because if you're trying to build a company that uses let's say, an AI chatbot for customer service because you can't afford to hire real people and a team of customer service reps. If you have 10 million tokens per month in inputs and outputs, you'd be paying $44 a month with OpenAI versus just $1 a month with DeepSeek. That's a 97% reduction in cost. And that means American developers are already building on DeepSeek's platform instead of OpenAI. So ultimately, the question is, why should we care? And we should care because it's not just a story about technology, it's a story about power between two countries. Remember all those videos talking about inflation and people asking, what does the US really export? Inflation in the US dollar, but really what the US exports is technology, because for decades, the United States has been the undisputed leader in technology and AI innovation, thanks to companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and now OpenAI. And DeepSeek could change all of that. Those chip restrictions from the US government, they were intended to slow down the race, to keep American tech on American ground, to stay ahead in the race. What we want to do is we want to keep it in this country. China is a competitor and others are competitors. So instead, the restrictions might have been just what China needed. If China is successful in deploying this technology at scale, it could give them a significant edge in everything from economic growth 
to even military dominance. And this technology could in theory be used to optimize their economy, predict global market trends, and maybe outmaneuver their competitors on the world stage. And it's not really hard to see how this could shift the balance of power. And if investors start to doubt US dominance in AI, we could see an even bigger sell-off in tech than we already have. Companies like NVIDIA, which supply the chips for AI, could be hit especially hard. And for the average American, that could mean a hit to their 401k, or retirement savings. We're looking at over $620 billion in market losses in just one day from one news story. There's never been a bigger single-day drop for a U.S. stock ever. But this didn't stop at NVIDIA. Look at all the red in tech at a time when these tech companies represent a record amount of space in the S&P. And if the infamous NVIDIA bull Nancy Pelosi didn't see this coming, then it shows you how important it is to diversify early. Now, I've talked about diversifying into alternative assets like crypto for years. But unlike crypto, one alternative asset class has actually had a negative correlation to stocks over the last 30 years. And I'm talking about blue chip contemporary art, which sounds crazy to even consider for investment until you learn about all the billionaires who sit on nine figure plus art collections, including the people behind this new tech revolution like VC Mark Andressen from earlier, or Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen, who had a billion dollar auction. Jeff Bezos even spent $180 million last year on a single painting. But it's not just them. In 2023, Deloitte estimated the overall wealth held in art and collectibles was nearly $2.2 trillion and projected to hit almost $2.9 trillion by 2026. But the second reason why you might want to care about this is because of money and the stock market. What does this all mean for the valuation of some of these AI stocks now that this has happened? Because for the last few years, the stock market, which is mostly driven by tech stocks, has gone up thanks to the story that AI is going to revolutionize the world. And the US is going to see most of that benefit since it's the one that's pioneering this space. I mean, think of how much money was spent and invested by venture capital to make ChatGPT, and then Tony Stark all of a sudden shows up and builds the same technology in a cave in just a couple of weeks. Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with a box of scraps. Imagine all the people that spent millions of dollars investing only to realize maybe it should only cost a couple of million dollars and not take years and years to make. As Shmath Palhapatia puts it, let me say the quiet part out loud. AI model building is a money trap. That's one of the wake-up calls we just had this week when the stock market corrected. But I do think there is a lesson in all of this. And the lesson is that it's now more important than ever for countries to work together to develop this technology instead of thinking about this as an arms race. But that's probably easier said than done for an entertainer on social media than it is for the leader of a country. But here is where I think we're about to go next in the world of investing. The next story of what's about to drive the market and all the hype and all the money that's going to go into it is less software AI driven and more hardware AI driven. That's because there's only so much we can train data systems on just by feeding them textual data and information. So the next phase will be feeding these systems with practical, physical data, and I'm talking about robots. Actual robots doing things and learning how to build and create, which will be the next leg of this race. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to see you back here next week. I'll see you soon.